So I came into this summer with the goal to learn how to work with leather. And maybe my ultimate goal was that I wanted to make myself a backpack out of leather. So I've been carrying around this bag for the last almost, it feels like five years now. It's a nice bag, it's got lots of pockets and stuff, but it's a little bit worn out and kind of ugly and honestly really big for a lot of the uses that I have. I looked around the market quite a lot for a new bag to replace this one and I came across a lot of good options. Honestly, there's a ton of great bags out there. But for whatever reason, I, I got really fascinated by leather, and so I started looking around for a leather backpack. It turns out just a casual sort of daily carry backpack made out of leather is a little bit uncommon. I couldn't find a lot myself, and the ones that I did find, I just wasn't all that enthusiastic about. And I figured that, you know, maybe if I put in some real effort to learn not only the craft of leatherworking, but to design something for myself that I would like and use on a daily basis, I thought maybe I could make it happen, not only for me, but to even produce additional bags later on if, uh, if I could sell them. Who knows? It's always possible. At this point, I've just made the one, and you're about to see the video series on how I made this. There's going to be multiple parts because it was very involved. There's a lot involved in making a bag like this. And I mean, I have no formal training. I have followed basically just my own opinion, my own ideas on how to make a bag like this. So. I wouldn't consider these videos a how-to or anything like that. It's purely just me solving the problems involved in making a backpack like this out of leather. So without further ado, welcome to episode one of Building a Bag. This is all new to me. I've never attempted to do something like this. Something as simple as this, like this is what I'm making right here. A little loop that it's like a keeper for a belt, right? It's very simple. Technically, it's it's just a piece of leather in a in a loop, two rivets. Pretty simple, right? But how do you make this? Well, First you, you cut the piece of leather, then you have to dye it, then you have to cut it down to the correct size. Uh, well, I guess I skived it first, then I cut it to the final size, then I measured out where I need to skive the uh, overlapping parts, and then I put holes in it. Now I have dyed the edges, and theoretically it should be good now. Making a leather bag almost happens in reverse. You have to consider all of the small details first because the majority of them, they actually can't be done after the larger parts of the bag have been put together. It's absolutely crucial for you to have foresight. 
You have to start the bag with something that's not even kind of conventional to the start of something. So I had to start with making all of these straps and including the keeper that you're seeing me make right here. I use this eight to nine ounce, maybe it's even more uh, natural vegetable tan leather, which has uh, a lot of processes done to it to make it look like I wanted for the, the final product. The straps themselves are probably one of the most demanding and painstaking parts of this entire build. Here I'm putting together what will be some buckles that actually close parts of the bag. Two of them will be to close the main flaps that cover the top of the bag. And a third one will be used purely for the front pocket. One of the processes here is making a slot for the buckle to, uh, to stick through. And so cutting it like I am right there is much more difficult than using the proper tool which is a <laughs> slot punch. And if I was to do it any more than maybe two or three of them like I have here, it's definitely worth investing in because it's actually pretty difficult to get a nice clean cut. When it comes to riveting in this this buckle, I left one of these holes unpunched. The, on the one on the back side of this buckle, I didn't punch through, and that's just so that I could do this here and make sure that it would be aligned even once the keeper was installed. Um, no point in punching a hole there and then having it in the wrong spot, so I figured this was the safest way to do it. This is going to be the straps themselves that close the top of the bag, as well as the one I mentioned for the pocket. Uh, this would be a lot easier, cutting the ends of the straps, if you have a proper strap cutting tool, which exists, of course, to cut a nice end on a strap, or at very least having a template. There's all kinds of strap uh, or belt templates that give you not only the end dimensions, but the hole dimensions as well. I ended up marking all of these holes just 100% by measurement, and they aren't perfect. They're, they're decent, and you can get a pretty good product doing it that way, but obviously the ideal way would be some kind of a template to make sure that your holes are perfectly in the middle and perfectly spaced apart.
now I've moved on to what will be the main components of the bag, what will make up the exterior walls and shell of, of the backpack itself. This is a chrome tanned leather. It's called Grey Beastie, I guess, from my local leather supplier. I think it's a really cool looking leather. It's It's got sort of a weathered look to it, and I love the texture. I think it really has a, a lot of character. You can see these pieces that I'm attaching are actually what will be the flaps that cover the top of the bag. And they are, there's two different flaps. Like I mentioned, it's, it's a design I came up with and I wanted to try out. I thought it would look interesting. And so I had to have these very precisely mounted onto the back in order to be at the right angle and the right position to actually cover the bag. I'm already worried. I'm already worried that these flaps are not actually going to cover the top of the backpack. Like, one of the fears I had with this design is that maybe it wouldn't actually cover. <laughs> like, there'll be a hole in between them. That's kind of like, it's not a very good bag if it doesn't actually close. So here I'm working on another piece of that really thick veg tan, and this and another piece like it will end up being the mounting points, the connection points for the backpack straps, the main straps that go over your shoulders to make it a backpack. So these are some pretty big hefty parts that are going to probably see quite a bit of weight on them. I also built into this piece a really basic handle that just spans between the two and it's just another strip of the same leather and of course that's just to make it a little easier to lift the bag and you can hang it on stuff. So I don't actually have a punch set uh, other than this rotary tool for making small holes. And so I improvised. I saw this somewhere online. I can't take credit for it, but you actually just set the punch that you want to use to be the one that's facing the back or the other end. And you punch it through as if it was a normal punch. I don't think it's really the proper way to do it, and it's probably pretty hard on the one that is actually up against the anvil on the other side. But it works.
<laughs> Look how bad this is. Soprano C, we gotta keep it on a high note. There's levels to it, you and I know. So don't worry guys, I totally understand that this is a very strange way to do what I'm doing here. Uh, I, don't, I can't really explain how I came up with this idea, but Basically, I'm mounting these panels through this top layer of leather, and so the those flaps that are eventually going to cover the top of the bag, they are mounted in sort of two spots. They had that original line of stitching at the bottom, and then I put these through them, and they'll actually be stitched right through them as well. And so, I don't know, I guess, there, there's just no real value to having this, the flaps go that far down the back side of the bag, but I thought it kind of looked cool to have the these panels in line with those flaps on the back side. I don't know. It's interesting to me, and I'm pretty sure no one has anything like this out there, so it's unique anyway. Look, this is what, oh shit, that's what it's gonna be like, right there. Oh yeah. It's attached. Now I gotta stitch all of this. Yikes. All right, guys, so here's a quick update after a couple of days, uh, quite a few hours actually, of work. I just wanna do a quick rundown on what exactly I've done so far. Maybe you can kinda tell what this is all gonna be, maybe not. It's the first time I've made something like this and you can see that it's 
Already it's quite complex and uh, it's my own design. It's completely untested. I have no idea if it's gonna work. I have no idea where sort of the weaknesses are, but uh, let me just tell you sort of what you're looking at here. So the big piece, this is gonna be the bottom right here. It's gonna sit roughly like that. And then uh, this will be vertical on the back. So this is the back that would be against your back. Did I mention this is a backpack? I don't remember. Anyway, that's gonna be the bottom. This is gonna be the back right here. So uh, these wings on the side are gonna be where the attachments are for the lower part of the backpack strap. And this is what the piece will look like. Uh, obviously these ones aren't finished yet, but uh, this is gonna be the bottom of the backpack strap itself. So this will mount right here and well actually it'll mount, yeah, yeah, it'll be like that. And so the bottom of the bag will be here and this will be pulling up and you know, towards the wearer of the bag. And then of course, this being the back, this these flaps right here are actually what's gonna cover the top of the bag. So it's like a flap top bag, but it's got two different flaps. I, I just wanted to do that for stylistic reasons. I don't think there's any advantage to it. In fact, I'm seeing already plenty of downsides to it. So these are the connection points for the upper part of the backpack straps. So they're gonna go through these D-rings at the top of the bag. And this is obviously the carry handle. So the carry handle is very simple. It's just a single uh, one inch piece of leather and uh, it's just a tiny bit long. So it's got a little bit of a loop to it, but it's not uh, very, you know, it's not very handle-like. It's just kind of some extra material, which will definitely work as a handle. So that's where we're at. I still have, I have these which are going to be the straps. So these are gonna to attach to these flaps here and they're gonna be the closure for the, for the main flap of the bag. And the rest of the pieces I have down here, this is all of the material I'm gonna use, um, except for one piece. I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is actually making an internal pocket that I'm gonna make out of a different material than all of this, but this is all of the main components of the bag. That's it, I hope you're enjoying the build.